Hi everyone and welcome back to a new video about system identification. This is our example number 8. In this example we will see how we can determine a transfer function of a controller. In this specific case we will discuss the PI controller. And again we will look at calculations step by step and we will verify this using simulations in MATLAB. So let's look at the example. We have the following situation. The step response of a system is given. And the input R, which is given here in red, is a step signal with an amplitude of 4. You can see that here. The response is uh, the blue line. In this case, it is a sort of an integrator what we have discussed in the previous example. But it has a shift of 2, in this case, at the origin. So at start, it doesn't start at the origin. It starts at 2. So And then it has a slope, which is constant. So it is a sort of a integrator but it has also some gain at the origin and that will be of course a little bit different so we will discuss this step by step so let's start to look at the solutions for this response so let's also look at the observations from the plot and in this particular case we are interested in the output so the output response that will have the following the ramp signal will be produced by a step input but in addition, that ramp has a slope of 0.6. Why? Because it has, at this point, for example, given here, it is a value of 8, and that starts at 2, so we have a difference in the y, delta y is 6, so it is 8 minus 2 is 6, and the difference in the time is 10, so it is 10 minus 0, so we have a 0.6 as a slope. But we all know, as, as mentioned earlier, that we have a shifted up signal response, which is then a shift of two in the positive y direction. And that will be taken into consideration for our response. So in total, this will be, since there is a shift up and there is a slope, which is a constant, this is a combination of a gain and also an integrator. So that is, since the gain is a proportional Part and the integrator is then the integral part, so we have then the PI control in this case. That will be the model, so the transfer function model for this case will be then this, which is then the gain, in addition the summation of the integral part, where we have the K1 and the K2 that we need to determine in the transfer function for this system. So the transfer function of the system, let's go step by step. We look at the Laplace transform, so we determine the Laplace transform for input signal, which is then the capital R for our uh, representation of the time domain of your input. Then we determine the Laplace transform of the output signal, which is then Y, capital letter Y, but then that is of course the Laplace transform of the signal here given in the time domain, so we will need to determine that also. And we will calculate then using these two output and input signal representation of the Laplace transform and then we will use the ratio here so y over r that will be the h now the r which is an input signal is a step input which has an amplitude of four so you can see that four times that unit input signal which is then a step and the output y is a uh, linear function it started two you can see that here and it has a slope of 0 0.6 t and this start at the origin so that's actually why we need also a ut at the end in this expression so that's actually what we have for the output this is what we have for the input these needs to be determined also or converted in the laplace domain so we will now have laplace transform of this input that is then of course the laplace transform of the step input is just 1 over s and since there's the amplitude of 4 then we will have 4 over s which is just straightforward from a table and for that we can do it for this and this separately so for this one which is a constant slope so it's actually a linear function which is increasing that is 0 0.6 over s squared and if you just have a t then it will be 1 over s squared so that's just the amplitude and for this one that is 2 which is exactly the same procedure as for the input, so that will be 2 over s. That will be the combined uh, Laplace transform of the output. Now, if you simplify this, you will have this expression, and that will be then combined for the output and the input. So the output is the blue one, and the input is the red one. You will have then the Laplace transform for the transfer function of the system. So that will be then the following.
just the output divided by the input and if you simplify this you will have this expression and if you move on a little bit further you can make this representation and you can see directly that the k1 and then k2 can be seen from this plot from this expression you can see 0 0.5 for the k1 and 0 0.15 for k2 which is just this expression just looking at the like terms so then we have determined our transfer function and in general you can also write it down in this form that will be maybe easier to uh, work out in further analysis by tuning your controller because this is now the controller gain of the pi controller 0 0.5 and this is your pi controller 0 which is at minus 0 0.3 that's just working out this in one fraction that is what we have now determined for our transfer function of the pi control now we will check this and we will see also that in the simulation so let's jump to the simulations now we do first the transfer response and we have the specific the step response this is the plot what we have you can see here that i have the r which is our input it has an amplitude of four and this is the response which is the orange line so this is the y and you can see it starts at the origin so at time equal to zero it has an amplitude of two and it's increasing linearly and for ex and for the time at 10 seconds i have a value of eight which is exactly what we had also so this was a transfer function and that's what we get and we also see again that the amplitude stays at four for our uh, input signal so Again, these are the points we have just verified here, and this is what we also have for our input. So you can see this transfer function looking at the transit response, the step response is the correct one. But let's also verify this in the frequency response, in particular to the body plot or the body diagram, which is the following. Again, our transfer function here. We see here that the value of your of our gain, this is the gain, this is the phase at 1 milli radians per second or 0 0.011 radians per second this is 42 43.5 dbs and what you see if i go up with, with frequency one decade so i make this 10 times larger at 0 0.01 so 10 milli radians per second the magnitude will drop by 20 db and that is actually an effect of a pure integrator part so this part is a pure integrator so you can see that it is in decreasing by 20 db for each increase of the frequency by one decade what you also see because this is not decreasing uh, in, a, in this linear fashion as a constant phase because it some some at some frequency that will of course level off due to that zero and that is at minus 0 0.3 for this representation and you can also see that here because at 0 0.3 you will see that this gain is minus 0. Point, is that minus 3.01 db but we need to also look at the uh, the dc i mean the high frequency gain because at high frequency this transfer function has a value of minus 6.02 db so you can calculate this by uh, making s approaching infinity then you will have this value of minus 6.02 db now for the cutoff frequency or the actual location of the zero in this case because this is a low pass filter but it has uh, it has a, a zero somewhere then we can see that this can be determined by looking at this value of the uh, response and then go up by 3.01 db and that's at this value of the magnitude and you can see that this frequency is 0 0.3 that is the zero frequency we can also see that from this plot and that's from transfer function now the phase again in, a, in another confirmation at this zero frequency the phase is now minus 45 degrees it has increased from minus 90 degrees for this very low frequencies and at that zero frequency it is actually increased by 45 degrees increasing from minus 90 degrees to minus 45 degrees and that's what we have now for this uh, point and that's actually another confirmation that this is indeed the correct uh, zero frequency now you can also see at 10 radius per second approximately at infinity you can also make it 101 million at that frequency the phase shift will be very really small. In this case, it's approximately minus 1.7. If you go uh, with your frequency to 100 radians per second, you will see that this will approach to 
zero. That's actually what will happen. So this is actually again a confirmation that this is the correct transfer function for this uh, system since this is of course given in the such a way that you can see the zero directly and you can then pinpoint your zero also from the body diagram. Then we will now look at also the simulations in real time in MATLAB and see that this response is also visible there. So let's jump now to MATLAB. So this is the MATLAB script I have prepared for my system identification example number eight. You can see again the definition of the de defined Laplace uh, parameter using this command. The system parameters, we have determined the K1 was 0 0.5 and the K2 was 0 0.15. So the proportional gain and integral integrator gain. So we have the proportional integral controller model. That's just a summation of the K1 plus K2 over S. Now I need an input and of course I need to plot this. And this is actually the way, one of the ways to plot that input also. I made actually a constant value, but I need to make it like four times S over S, which is just four of course, but this is the way the, uh, the MATLAB wants the input for our step command. And this is the output, which is Y. That's actually the input times mine resp I, I mean transfer function. So we will see that in the step. So let's look at the uh, responses and time and the frequency domain. So let's run this. This is now running. I will make first, I make sure that the R is indeed what we have, the so 4S four time over four. So it's just, I mean S just four and the trans, function for the H, which is this one. You can also make it in the pole, zero pole gain configuration. So let me also do that. So zero pole and a gain configuration. So you can see that this is indeed the controller gain 0 0.5 and you will see that this is then 0 0.3, which is then the zero of our transfer function. Okay, now I will do the step for this one and then use R and Y that, that those are both will be plotted and I will do grid on. You will see that we have the both curves here. So let me get it. This is the plot. And you can see here, if I make it larger, that it starts and it has a value of four for the input, which is actually all the way to here, it's just four. So I just make this larger, you can see that Clearly, it doesn't matter at what time you look, that is just always four. And if I just look at also the response, which is the orange line, you can see it is at zero seconds, it's two. And if I look at 10, which is then of course what we wanted, which is then or 10, in this case it's eight, and which is then of course what we had also in our response. So this is indeed correct. So we have the blue line, which is the response, and this blue, uh, I mean the orange line, and the blue line, which is our input in this case, and that is a confirmation of the step response. You can also see that this is just increasing linearly, and of course, if you look at, for example, 20, that will, of course, be in a linear fashion. So if I look at 20, what do I have? I have 14. There's again an increase of 6, so it is increasing by 6. So that is actually a confirmation that this is indeed the correct step response. Now let's also look at the body diagram. So I will close this and I will now look at the body and then specifically just a uh, system so I will use only H. So to grid on that will be the response. So let's look at it. Make it larger. So make it even more larger and you can see that the for example the Zero frequency. Let me go to first to the high frequency gains. Five frequency at, for example, ten. Here, let me make it larger. This is then approximately minus six point three, six point zero two dB. And you can see that this is then the phase, which is then very small. So at that phase, at that frequency, I have a very small phase. Okay. I can also check that also for the zero frequency because the zero frequency will have this 3.01 dB larger. So I go up and I will see that this is indeed the case. So that was at 0 0.3 approximately. So you can see that this is indeed correct. So I make it larger. You can also make it a little bit accurate by pinpointing this correctly. You can see that it is indeed going up 
by 3.01 dB at this zero frequency. And at the frequency, the same frequency at 0 0.3, I have a phase shift of minus 45 degrees. Why? Because the phase shift was at low frequencies, minus 90 degrees. And at the zero frequency, I need the additional phase of plus 45 degrees. So this is actually what we have. So we add 45 degrees at that time. And of course, you can look at the um, location here at the zero. I mean, the, uh, at this fre uh, this frequency, so you can see at 0 0.01, what will happen there. That's also what we had. So 0 0.01 radians per second, we had 23.5 dBs. And if I go up by, so I make it 10 times larger, I have this. Let me check this. This is what I have. You can see this is approximately 4 dB. So let me make it larger. And this is, of course, not completely linear anymore because I am approaching already the zero frequency. So if I make it, for example, for a smaller value of the frequency, that 20 dB per decade decrease will be much clearer. So this actually must be 3.5, of course, but it is a little bit larger due to that zero. But let me change the limits and I will go to 0. 001, which I had actually in a discussion. So this is what we have. But if I now go up and I go to 0 0.001, so actually 1 milli radians per second. So let me try to make this accurately. Okay. And then this is then, you can see 43.5 dBs. I go down by 20 dB. If I increase the frequency 10 times, but if I now increase the frequency again 10 times here, this is not decreasing by 20 dB, it must be 3.5. This is 3.96, probably 4 dBs. Why is this a little bit larger? Because I already approaching the zero frequency. That's why we have this issue. So it is not a completely asymptotic situation. And that's actually what we see also from the body diagram that this is indeed a first order decrease in the in this low frequency part, which is actually the part where the integrator is dominating. And this is now where the, pole f uh, the zero frequency is coming due to that PI controller action. And then the system will level at minus 6.02 dB for higher frequencies and you will have a phase shift of zero. So you will have a phase shift of minus 90 degrees at low frequencies and it will approach zero uh, degrees for higher frequencies. And that is actually the confirmation again using frequency response for this system what we have here this system all right this is action for example number eight about the pi controller we will continue with different examples if you have any questions or comments please let me know i will try to answer them as soon as possible thanks again and see you next time and take care